Hello everyone. So we are going to start now the part two from the micromerities. So in this part, we are going to deal with the remaining type of the method which are used to determine the particle size. So without wasting any time, let's start our discussion. The next method is the sieving method. So sieving method, regarding the sieving method, we have already studied in the size separation, isn't it? So the sieving method it is the most classical type of the method which is actually employed to differentiate the particle based on their sizes. So in this method we use the standard pharmaco means pharmacopl sieve, right? So you see the sieving method it is a very ordinary and simple method which is applied in the laboratory scale and it is widely used for the method of the particle size analysis. The thing is that the sieve analysis it is usually carried out using the dry powder so here it is very hard to use the lumps but still we can use it so although for powder in the liquid suspension or which agglomerate during the drying means formation of the granules in such cases a process of wet sieving can also be used wet sieving is a different process now the sieving method it directly gives the weight distribution how it gives the weight distribution based on the differentiation of the particles based on their size you can also differentiate the particle based on their weight right so it find application in the doses development of the tablets and capsule and one thing you should remember 15 percent that is this particular figure 15 percent of fine powder should be present in the generated material to get a proper flow of the material and achieve a good compaction we generally need a 15 percent of the fine powder this part we have to remember always right so does the percentage of the coarse moderate fine powder it is estimated by this method so the method it is very simple the sieve analysis it actually it uses a sieve now what is a sieve the sieve analysis it utilizes a wire mesh wire mesh which is made up of generally the brass bronze stainless steel even sometimes it is also made up of propylene or you can say plastic and they have the aperture the aperture are known as a hole right so which actually acts as a barrier for the flow of material through it right so the standard sieves are as per the pharmacopoeia the pharmacopoeia has already mentioned the sieve number as well as their aperture sizes so most sieve analysis actually they do generally generally based on the stacking principle stacking means they used to layer the sieve one after another one after another just piling up the sieve together right? so where we have the coarse mass the sieve with a bigger hole at the top and the sieve with the smallest hole at the bottom just above the collector tray i will show you the arrangement so the sieve this stack of the sieve is generally contains six to eight number of sieve right so the powder it is loaded on the coarsest sieve at the top and it is subjected for mechanical vibration it is subjected for vibration and based on this vibration the particle does come out or they escape out from this sieve the vibration is done for 20 minutes done so after this time the powder it is retained on each of the sieve it is weighed and thus we can definitely get the weight distribution also so the particles are now considered to be retained on the sieve with the mass apparatus corresponding to the sieve diameter so the size it is estimated as per given in the pharmacopoeia so let's have the table so as per the pharmacopoeia you see sieve number 10 aperture size is 1700 right 1700 micrometer so these are the numbers and this is the weight distribution whenever it will pass through the sieve here we are going to have the weight distribution so this is as per the pharmacopoeia so let's see how the sieves they are arranged they are generally done in stacking method so this is the stacking you see they are piling up one after another the coarser sieve it is at the top and the finer sieve it is at the bottom right so in this way we generally stack up the sieve and here just you just see this is the coarser one it can retain bigger size pebbles the newer one can uh, be retain quite smaller as compared to that and in this way the last thing we can retain the powder from it right now the thing is that it should be taken care while for means doing this activity because if you don't keep adequate care of the instrument or the equipment during the process 
reproducibility of the result may not be accept, means accepted reproducibility means after again after repeating the experiment if you don't get the same result so the type of motion the time of operation speed weight of the powder should be fixed and standardized in this method what are the advantages number one it is inexpensive it is a simple method and it is a rapid so the results moreover the results are reproducible but there are also some limits disadvantages so lower limit is 50 micron you cannot separate the particle laser than 50 micron in this method moreover if the powder is moist then it can causes the clogging of the aperture if the clogging of the aperture will occur then definitely it will hamper the size distribution right moreover the attrition between the particles during the process during the vibration may cause size reduction and it may give inaccurate result actually done so now the next method it is a sedimentation method so the thing is that in this method actually the particle size can be determined by examining the powder as it sediments out means we are allowing the powder to sediment and while the powder will sediment we are going to determine its particle size so sample preparation how we are going to do the sample preparation in this method the powder it is dispersed in a suitable solvent now where we are going to disperse the powder see if the powder it is hydrophobic use a polar solvent that is a hydrophilic one and if the it is it, still if it is not allowing then it means not mix, mixing up properly then we can also use a wetting agent to the powder right and in case the powder is soluble in water means that it is if the powder is hydrophilic then it is always necessary to use a hydrophobic liquid or to carry out the analysis using the gas right the principle of measurement nothing it is just the particle size analysis done by sedimentation method and it is divided actually into two main categories one it is the retention one another one it is the non-retention one so what are the two categories the first one it is the based on the measurement of the particle in a retention zone this is the first method and the second method is Another type it is the measurement in the non-retention zone, measurement zone. Done. So let's discuss. So example of non-retention zone it is known as the pipette method. So let's see the pipette method. That is the Anderson pipette method. It has been developed by the two young scientists that are the Andersons and the Lundberg. So they commonly call it as a Anderson pipette method so what actually we used to do in this method a known volume of the suspension they are drawn off they are drawn off they are pulled off and the concentration defines are measured with respect to time so actually it involved mix measuring the percentage of solid that settle with the time in a graduated vessel so this is the Anderson pipette. This is the sampling one. This is the reservoir, 10 ml reservoir. This is a three way tap. This is known as the upper set limit. This is the lower set limit. And in between this, this they have a pipette. So, construction simply, you just see this Anderson pipette, it has a fixed position pipette. It consists of the two. 200 mm graduated cylinder this is the 200 mm graduated cylinder which can hold up to 500 ml of suspension now a pipette is located centrally right in the cylinder and it is held by a position by a ground glass stopper so then it is its tip coincide with the zero level right so a three-way trap this three-way tap allow fluid to be drawn into the 10 ml reservoir which can be emptied into the beaker using a sentry fuse tube so let's perform it the method just prepare a one person suspension of the powder actually in a suitable liquid medium and it is placed in the pipette here we are going to place it right now at a given interval of time the samples are withdrawn from the specified depth without disturbing the suspension don't disturb the suspension now the amount of the powder can be determined by weight flowing following the drying and centrifuging actually alternatively chemical analysis of powder can be carried out so the best method it is the using the stroke slope so the particle size it is determined in terms of the strokes diameter 
using the modified strokes law or strokes equation this is the modified stroke equation dst is equal to 18 rho h right so what are these parameters dst is nothing but the strokes diameter eta it is the viscosity of the medium h it is the sedimentation height rho s minus rho f this is the rho s minus rho f it is the difference in the density of the particles and the fluid fz is the force of the gravity and t it is the sedimentation time right so a pipette is located centrally in the centrally in the cylinder and it is held in a position by a ground glass stopper so that the tip coincides with the zero level as i have already told you a three-way taps it allow it allows actually the fluid to be drawn into the 10 ml reservoir which can be emptied into the beaker or the centrifuge and the amount of the powder can be determined following drying and centrifuging so the data of the cumulative weight it is used for determination of the particle weight distribution and number here so we have discussed only one type there is one more type that is a second type the second type of sedimentation analysis actually size analysis it used the retention zone method and it also uses the stroke slow so what actually we do here it is one of the most common retention method use actually we use a sedimentation balance here we are going to use a sedimentation balance if we are using a balance means we are going to dilute the balance band that is the weight in this method the amount of the sedimented particles falling onto a balance pan suspended in the fluid is recorded and thus the particle size will be determined the next method the last method it is the conductivity method as the name itself it reveals conductivity of the particles or by virtue of the particles so in this method we have two popular types number one it is known as the electrical streaming sensing zone method which is also known as the culture counter method the next, next one it is the laser light scattering method so this is a high-end technique it is used nowadays in every aspect so actually it is based on the principle of change of light intensity so the measurement of the change of the light intensity in the light actually gives, gives the particle size it gives the particle size simply just think there is a beam of light it is falling on a wall if any particles pass through this beam of light what will happen there will be a diffraction right there will be a de deviation of the beam of laser or light this deviation actually it correlates with the size done so let's discuss the counter counter method so how we are going to first prepare the sample the powder sample they are very, they will be dispersed in an electrolyte to form a very dilute suspension right first of all we are going to prepare the sample the powder sample will be dispersed in the electrolyte right now the suspension it is usually subjected for ultrasonic agitation why we perform the ultrasonic agitation because if somehow during the time of mixing agglomeration flocks or coalescence it forms it has need to be broken up the particle need to uh, remain as a separate entity they should be remain as a separate entity done so a dispersion may also be added to aid the particle deagglomeration so this is the machine so this is the method so the particles just while i am going to uh, describe this just have a look over this instrument and its diagram right the particle suspension it is drawn through the aperture it is drawn to the aperture right accurately drilled through a sapphire crystal set into the wall of the hollow glass wall of the hollow glass tube so actually this is the aperture now what it says about the aperture you see electrodes situated on either side of the aperture they are surrounded by the electrolyte solution done now you see this electrode actually they monitor the change in the electrical change signal this electrode they actually monitor what they are going to monitor the change in the electrical signal which occurs when a particle momentarily occupies the orifice and displays its own volume of the electrolyte so when the particle is momentarily it is going to occupy the orifice right and displays its own volume of electrolyte thus the volume of the electrolyte fluid which is going to get displaced by the in the orifice by the presence of the particle causes a change in the electrical resistance 
This is the amplifier. The signal will be sent here. Amplifier threshold circuit, circuit, and this is the pulse amplifier. Thus, this electrode, which is proportional to the volume of the particle, you are going to get here. Clear? So, advantage. This method they have a huge advantage. Particle size ranging from 0 0.5 to 500 microns can be measured using the contra counter. Moreover, it gives the number distribution, particle volume, as well as diameter. It is very accurate and sensitive, and it is a very fast technique. Approximately 4000 particles per second can be counted using this contra counter method. But this advantage is that it is quite expensive it is quite expensive thus we cannot use it in the laboratory scale so thank you everyone for your patience hearing if you like my video just press the like icon you can share this video and you can subscribe to my channel thank you once again